All right. Hello, welcome to the data analytics welcome workshop. So you're attending this workshop today because it's required for all of our new admits into the business school. Um, let's get started here. Um, change. All right, there we go. All right, so meeting your team here. So my name's Nick. I am your academic advisor for the major. So I handle more of the academic side of things, making sure to keep you on track for graduation and anything like that. And then Valerie, she is our career coach for the major. So she does more of the career side of things. So like what's next with your degree? Um, so we are your, what we like to describe as your success team here in the Huntsman School of Business. Um, so come meet with us. We'll kind of talk about on the next slide here how to meet with us. Also, uh, before we go, if you're a statewide campus student watching this recording, you're going to want to meet with Amanda. She is our statewide campus advisor, and you can schedule an appointment with Amanda using the QR code you see on the screen there. Um, and then the QR code you see on this screen is how you schedule an appointment with Valerie or myself. Um, for our appointment policy, we do have a 10 minute uh, grace period. So let's say your appointment starts at two, you have till 2.10 to show up to that appointment until we uh, will make you reschedule. And the reason we give you that kind of 10 minute uh, grace period is just because we know like parking sometimes on, camp on campus can be hard to find or anything like that, or maybe you just forget. But uh, the reason we have you reschedule after if it's been like past 10 minutes since the start of your appointment, is because after like that, it kind of makes the appointment pretty short as we only have 30 minutes with you. And sometimes we may have other stuff going on and maybe have a student right after you. So we don't want to like take their time. And we just want to respect our, our time as advisors and career coaches and also your time as students. And then for phone appointments, we like to point out that you're required to call in to your office for your phone appointment. Uh, we don't call you for those appointments, just kind of Wanted to kind of stick that out because I know some offices at Utah State do stuff a little bit different, but yeah, so for phone appointments, make sure to call in. Um, and then student privacy, some stuff here. So when you call in or you come in for your appointment, um, so FERPA is something that protects your student stuff. So if you, like, you call into the office, you might be asked to have like your security phrase or anything like that. Um, that's because of the FERPA federal law that protects your student information from anybody that can just, so not anybody can just like call in and ask about how you're doing. Uh, delegates, uh, if you want like your parents to have access or like your wife or anything like that or husband to have access to your student account and be able to like help you with things, they'll be, a, they will be, have to be made a delegate on your student account. If you want to know how to get that set up, just send me an email and I can I can walk you through that process of how to do it. Uh, and then your student A number email. So um, this is important. We highly encourage that you check this count like at least once or twice a day to make sure you're like you're staying up to date on things that are happening. Um, and then also emailing us from this account too, because it is that like perfect protected email. So when you email us from this account, we know it's you. Um, then including your A number, that uh, is super helpful for us as career coaches and advisors so if we're looking up stuff or anything like that. Um, having your A number just handy there in the email is super important for us as that makes it kind of our response time a little bit faster just so I don't have to like email you back being like, hey, what's your A number? I need that to be able to look stuff up. Um, so yeah, using that student email is super important for kind of just staying up to date on what's happening within Utah State and the Huntsman School. But then if Valerie and myself need to email you something, we'll, we'll be sending it to that as well. Um, then minimum graduation requirements will kind of be going over in the next few slides here. So a total of 120 credits is required. Um, upper division's 40 credits. You'll get that within your business degree. So don't really worry about the upper division credits as majority of your major requirements for your data analytics degree here are going to be the uh, upper division. Uh, then you have some general and depth education requirements that um, are pretty specific to like you as a student. So come meet with me. We can kind of talk like what you what you have and what you need. Um, and then a 2.5 GPA in your USU and then your Huntsman uh, major. And then if you have a minor is required and then we'll go over degree requirements next year. So the business acumen, so these are a set of classes that all business students are required to take. 
Um, so it kind of just makes you a well-rounded business student, but also uh, it lets you explore our options that we offer uh, without losing that ground towards that graduation. As you see, you kind of take a like, couple classes from each of the areas that we offer as a major. For the data analytics major, uh, all these classes require a grade of a C or better. And then some specific um, major requirements for data analytics. So data analytics does have one of our higher uh, math requirements for our business majors. So you're required to take uh, Math 1210, which is calculus, and then uh, Math 2270, which is linear algebra. Uh, if it's been over a year since you last took a math class, you'll probably need to take the Alex math placement exam uh, to possibly test directly into that Math 1210. So please come reach out to me um, and let me kind of look over your stuff to make sure that if you need to do the Alex or if you're good or if you've taken like uh, calculus through AP, just making sure that's getting satisfied and properly pulled into your degree works page. And then also like data 3500 and data 3330 are probably the two most important classes within the data analytics degree as those are kind of the prerequisites to a lot of your other like upper division data analytics uh, core requirements. And if you really do know you want to do data analytics, taking those classes sooner rather than later is good because then those classes kind of set you up for internships and whatnot. Uh, degree works, uh, there's a little video here that we normally sometimes play, but I'm not going to play it today. Uh, come talk to me about degree works. We can kind of go through degree works together. This is kind of what I use as an advisor. We'll have it pulled up during an appointment and things like that. Um, but it's a super useful tool. It just kind of gives you a general good rundown of the requirements and like what you have remaining, what you've already completed. Uh, it's just kind of a list of what you have to do. It's not how you should be taking classes. So please just come meet with me so we can get that degree works uh, plan set up for you until graduation. And then a repeat policy is a little bit different than Utah State. So the Huntsman repeat policy is you're allowed to take a course up like to two times uh, before you're, you have to appeal for that third and final attempt. So like the slide says you get that first initial attempt at the class and then you get to repeat the course once. And then if you do need a third attempt at the class, you'll want to work with me about submitting an appeal to get that approved. And then the most recent attempt at the uh, class is what the grade that is reflected on your transcript and also on like the GPA calculation. So if you, let's say you get a C in one of those business acumen classes and you are considering retaking it, um, I'd like to suggest if you don't have to retake a class, it's kind of in your best interest not to retake a class because sometimes students, when they retake a class, I think it'll be easier or they might not have to go as much and then they will fail that second attempt. And then that kind of puts them in an interesting spot because they did better in that first attempt, but then they failed that second attempt. So then they need to appeal that, that third attempt. Um, again, just because we do use that most recent attempt. So that fail, if you took it a second time, is the, the attempt that is used in that GPA calculation. So um, yeah, if you're planning on repeating a class because you want to get a better grade, come talk to me first and let's kind of discuss that before you go ahead and do that. Um, and then Huntsman Minors. So we have over 20 minors that we offer. It's a great addition to your degree but it's not required for data analytics. So how I look at minors is if you are going to do a minor, choose something that is going to be like applicable to your future, like career goals or anything like that. Don't just pick a minor just to do a minor. Like it's really smart to be intentional if you are going to do that. A lot of good minors that pair well with data analytics that we kind of commonly see as advisors and like our value as a career coach uh, I always a lot of times see like finance and uh, consulting is a big one. Um, marketing students like as well as those have a lot of like, there's just a lot of like overlap with those industries and a lot that's where a lot of our students kind of fall in if they do a minor or a dual major. And then just some more, so registration calendars. So registration calendars are super, that can be found on our registrar's office website. Uh, that can kind of just give you any important information and dates with whatnot that are happening throughout the semester with your classes, like add drop dates when like first seven week classes start, second seven week classes start and anything like that. 
Uh, if you're on a wait list for a class, if you do get off that wait list for a class, you get an email sent to that A number email. So that's kind of also another reason to kind of check uh, on that uh, email just so um, if you're waitlisted for a class and get off it, make sure not miss that. So check in that as well. A uh, freshman academy, this course is highly encouraged for students to take within their first year. So this is a class that we offer. It's really just based for the freshmen. So if you've already been in at Utah State for a few years, you don't have to take this. But if this is your first year, your first time college student, we recommend you take freshman academy. Um, follow us on Instagram. Um, this is a great way to stay um, up to date with what is happening as normally like on their, their stories and whatnot, they'll be posting uh, events and stuff that are happening just within the business school or maybe wanting like to hear from you as a student with some student service um, stuff. Um, and then taking ownership in your education. So like me and Valerie, we're here to help guide you, but there's also some like ownership you guys need to take. So it's important to meet with us. Um, I like to say as an academic advisor, like to have students at least meet with me like once a year, um, just so we can make sure they're staying on track for graduation and things like that. And if there's anything we need to switch around with their schedule. So at least meet with me at least at the beginning of each, each school year, but I encourage at least like fall, at least meet with me during like fall and spring semester too. And then because a lot of you guys are kind of new admits to the business school and this is your first kind of year here as well at Utah State, um, make sure to check your transcript for any like AP concurrent enrollment or transfer classes to make sure you got those sent over to us so they are showing up for that. So it makes it easier on me. So when I'm suggesting classes for you, I kind of have a good general idea of like what you actually do have remaining. Um, so if you haven't got all that stuff uh, transferred over yet, make sure to get that stuff transferred over as soon as possible. And then our start desk is something that is located on the second floor of, or in between the second floor of Huntsman Hall and the Eccles Business Building. And uh, this is where we will have our student mentors sitting down there. So this is really just good for any like quick advising questions or like drop in career questions or anything like that. Our peer mentors that sit down there work closely with their office. So they're trained to do like uh, be able to answer quick advising questions or give you that student perspective on things and ways to get involved. And then they also do like drop in resume reviews as well. Um, but then I'll pass the time over here to Valerie. Super. Thank you so much, Nick. I'm so excited to be here and have this time with you as you're watching this um, presentation. And I'm sure I speak for Nick as well. We look forward to getting to know each of you individually. Um, and today, I just want to kind of start my remarks um, with highlighting what I hope are the three takeaways that you take away from what I say today. One, as Nick has mentioned a number of times, take time to meet with us. We are your success team, and what success is to you can be very individualized. And so we are interested and committed to helping you with that individualized success plan. The second thing is even though an internship is not required for data analytics, I recommend doing it early and doing it often. And then the third thing we'll talk about is getting involved. So just kind of a, a quick look, what you see on the screen here are various career paths within data analytics. So the, the words that are in bold, those are the functional areas within data analytics. And then the bullets below represent jobs that align with that functional area. And so this is just an example of career choices available to you as someone with a, a degree in data analytics. Um, and so again, meet with Nick and I, we can help you kind of figure out what you want to do. There are so many choices and options. And I really like what it says at the bottom of the screen is to remember that career paths are not linear and they are unique as you. So come in and meet with us. We'll talk about career paths and career exploration. Um, I talked about getting involved. So the logo on the top right is the logo for the Association for Information Systems. That's the club for our data IS majors. And represented there, we have um, students who participated in Hack USU, 
And last year, our student chapter hosted the National AIS Conference. And at each, there were between four and 600 students attending both events um, from around the state and from around the nation. So our student chapter has been recognized nationally as the number one student chapter multiple years. Um, and then as far as clubs go, AIS is what I call like the parent club. And then there are sub clubs under that. And one of the clubs on the picture on the right uh, was from an event from the cybersecurity club. It's called SOC. So for the student organization for cybersecurity. We also have the women in tech, which everybody is welcome to join, not just our female students. There's also a data engineering club. And um, although not part of um, AIS, I'll also post information from the data science club, which is housed in College of Science. So whether you choose to get involved in um, Huntsman clubs or USU clubs in general, getting involved will help you with that career exploration, networking opportunities. It will also help you stand out to recruiters. This is really something they look for on resumes is that involvement outside of class. Um, other things to mention within Huntsman is the Analytics Solution Center. This is an opportunity where you can apply what you're learning in school and have that real world experience working with real companies and having the opportunity to be closely mentored by our fantastic data IS um, faculty. Um, and when students complete this work at, in the ASC, it's also not uncommon that they then get follow-up job offers from the ASC. So that can be really beneficial. Um, and then one other club I like to point out uh, because it's important to get involved to have fun as well, not just be serious about clubs uh, as they relate to your major. But the USU Student Club, The Herd, is recognized as the nation's loudest student section as measured by the Richter scale. So with pride, <laughs> have fun, get involved. Um, anything else for clubs, Nick? No, I think it's just important to like, what Valerie is kind of mentioning that like it really is like getting involved like as much as you can um is super important just for like career development too like so then you can meet students that are kind of part of your major or interested in the same thing so if you're like looking for an easy way to meet friends like going to club events is a perfect way to do that as well yeah that's good and as you were talking I remember two other things I wanted to mention one is seed so it's like a seed you plant in the ground, and it's an acronym that stands for Small Enterprise Education and Development. And this is a great opportunity. They're typically semester-long experiences where our students go abroad internationally, and they help people in the areas that they go to with teaching basic business skills, funding methods, and mentoring them. And then we also have the GLE, it stands for Global Learning Experience. Um, and these are typically... Um, they're like a few weeks. Yeah, they're uh -huh. like a few weeks. Like the GLEs, those are the Global Learning Experiences, like they're pretty short. They typically happen at like the beginning of summer. Um, so it's but still giving you that like global vision. So like that's one of the pillars of the Huntsman School is giving you that global vision. So that's why we have those. Cause we know it might not be um attainable for everybody to be able to go on like a seed experience because that's a full semester long. So those are normally like 14 weeks where like the global learning trips are typically like one to three weeks, depending on the program mm -hmm. you'd attend. And some of the um, countries they've gone to in the past are France, uh, Europe, South Africa, and Peru. And so if you want more information about any of those, just talk to Nick or I. We can be in the right direction. So the next is internships. So I said it when I started. I'll never tire of saying it. Do internships. Do them early. Do them often. They'll help you stand out, and they'll help you better articulate your skills um, when you 
later meet with employers and interviews. Um, and then also I've talked with a number of students when they've done internships and just being mindful about intentionally interfacing with people that you come in contact with. When students do that, they often receive a, a, either a follow-up internship experience for the following summer or a job uh, if they're going to be a senior. And um, remember ASC can account for an internship experience. So I think that's about all I have to say there. Um, and then I did want to also mention we have a Canvas course. It's called Dare Mighty Careers for you all. Um, there is a first semester checklist, and that is designed really to give you all the opportunity to know what resources are available to you at Huntsman School of Business. There are a lot of things that are different and unique about Huntsman from the rest of uh, Utah State University. And so taking a look at that checklist will help acclimate you to what's available to you. And then there are other modules that will help you with career readiness, such as resume reviews, interview tips, um, career exploration, how to find an internship or a job that will give you some preliminary information um, before you meet with us. Um, the other things I wanted to point out really quick is Friday, we also have dedicated there are typically not any Huntsman classes scheduled on Fridays, and that's intentional to give you all opportunities as students to spend time developing professionally. And I'll just mention three activities that are typically held on Fridays. Um, one is leadership forums, and we typically have um, people such as past senators, CEO from Pepsi, business owners, often alum, and they will share a little bit about what their company is like. So great career exploration, also great opportunity to network. They come to meet students. And some of these speakers or guests have even um, provided inter internship opportunities for students who have attended. And then really importantly, we have our career expo. It'll be September 20th. And this year we're excited from 1030 to 11 is a time for students who, if you're a freshman, that's a time just for you to come and meet with employers. And then from 11 to 2 will be open for everybody. And the last thing I wanted to share is we have backpack to briefcase presentations where we, again, we invite industry professionals and alumni to come talk about student or topics we hear students talking a lot about. And so this is, again, another opportunity for you to connect um, and network with people um, because when they come and present, they always have the open mindset of wanting to connect with students and wanting to get to know them and, and answer any questions that they have. So in conclusion, as this slide says, um, connect with Nick and I. We really are your success team. You matter to us. Again, your success can look different individually. And we look forward to daring my things with you together. Yeah, and then as you saw, like the slide just switched, like those are our emails if you want to email us. And then we also put the Huntsman website. The Huntsman website is a great resource to kind of know what's going on and stay up to date. Uh, where you can find like the this we get Huntsman stuff on there with the event calendar and for us, but also the general just kind of event calendar for Utah State as well. And then finally, just like kind of what's next here. So to get that like completion done for this workshop, you'll want to make sure to scan this QR code and complete the completion form of the workshop. Um, the form shouldn't take too long. It'll just kind of have you like add, uh, answer some questions about kind of what we talked about and kind of just go over some of the general stuff just to say like, hey, yeah, we talked about this. This is how you do get that credit for the workshop and um, have it get checked off. And once you get this completed, uh, it'll send an email to me and that will get you good to go for registration for the spring semester. But again, yeah, if you do have any other questions, like please reach out to me or Valerie and uh, we can try to help you out as much as we can.